yet he still was ignorant of it. And he was, he was an unbeliever. He didn't, he didn't get it. There's a difference between that person and the person who is not ignorant about salvation, about the gospel, about every, you know, being able to understand how, what Jesus Christ did for them and fully understand it, fully understand the free gift, fully understand eternal life and have just, yes, I understand it, I get it, and I'm rejecting that. There's a difference between those two types of people. Apostle Paul was brought up in this. This is what he knew. This is how he was raised. And, and he continued on going down that path in so much that, hey, it was normal for him to continue in those ways and to fight against people, right? But he didn't know, he didn't really know the gospel. And that was the, the, the key difference with him being able to do this. And, you know, we don't see any evidence of, of the Apostle Paul not being, you know, sincere in his beliefs and trying, you know, trying to do what was right. And um, we don't see any evidence of him trying to, you know, just being covetous and trying to use people and just only cared about his own gain, you know, and, and just to fulfill the lusts of his own flesh because he was saying, you know, he was blameless according to the law. So he was still trying, trying to follow the law, trying to do those things in sincerity. So what I would say is that people who are trying to you know, follow what they believe is the truth aren't necessarily just false prophet reprobates, right? They're, they're deceived, they're wrong, they're unsaved, they're going to go to hell when they die if they don't put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, those people, I think it's, it's really difficult for them to overcome their, their, their strong held beliefs and convictions, but it's not impossible, that's probably very few and far between where people actually are getting saved that, that already are falling in this category. And there are, I'm sure, a bunch of people who are already reprobate that are in these positions of being pastors and stuff. But we can't just say that every single one is unsaved because then you would be, if, if the Apostle Paul was around today before he got saved, you'd be calling him a false prophet according to Scripture. You, it's not right. Matthew 7 is the last place we're going to look. Because Matthew 7 gives us, you know, the, well, how do we know whether or not someone is a false prophet? We already saw a lot of the, the signs and the indicators, right? Jude and, and 2 Peter chapter 2 tell us that one of the big things is the covetousness. We saw that, you know, the, the, when all men speak well of you, that's, that's how they spoke about the false prophets too. They're well-liked, they're well-received. Because they want the praise of men because that's how they're going to make the most money. They want, they want to tell the people whatever they want to hear. They're like a politician. They're God's politician. Right? The God of their own making. Their own idol that they set up. They'll tell you whatever they think you want to hear to keep you coming and to get big crowds and, and oh man, Pastor so-and-so, he's such a nice person, he's such a nice guy, and no one could ever say anything ever negative about him. Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse number 15, here's another reference, the last one we're going to look at. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. That's who the false prophet is. They look good on the outside, but they are a wolf. And, and the, the main point I'm driving home today is that not every person that you might say is a prophet is a wolf. Some are just, just deceived and, and, and ignorant and don't know any better and are following something that they think is right, but they're not a wolf trying just to destroy. Are they doing the work of the devil? You can say, yeah. Was, was Saul of Tarsus doing the work of the devil by attacking? Sure he was. He was a pawn. But he wasn't, he wasn't just the wicked one like just plotting and planning whatever he can do because he's just really wicked and trying to uh, only care about himself. He thought he was doing what was right. 